Let's talk simulation inside of SolidWorks. Now, SolidWorks simulation comes in three flavors, like most other products do in the SolidWorks family. You have simulation standard, simulation professional, and simulation premium. In this video, we're gonna talk about SolidWorks simulation standard. Now, simulation standard is basically just the core tools necessary for you, a designer, to get started with doing analyses on your parts. You can do three main things. You can do strength testing, durability testing, and motion analysis. Now the strength testing is what we call linear static analysis. You can load it up with forces or pressures and understand the stresses and the, the displacements. You can get a lot of insight into how well your model structurally will perform or, or the strength of it. And the fatigue testing allows you to test for the life of the product. After loading it multiple times, thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of times, this high cycle fatigue capabilities, what we call it, is found in simulation standard. And then you have motion analysis where you can add motors and understand the powers and graphs of components moving around and the forces and the reactions caused there in that study. So those are the three main areas of uh, functionality that you get with simulation standard. And we're gonna take a look at doing some strength testing and some uh, fatigue testing here inside of SOLIDWORKS. So real quick, I'm gonna set this up. This is just an example bracket and I'm the designer. I'm wanting to know, hey, is this bracket gonna hold the 200 pounds I need it to? Or do I need to change the material? Or do I need to make it a different shape and add material to it? Or maybe can I save some material? So let's take a look at that. All right, so to get started, simulation ribbon at the top, new study, we're doing a static study. And this is going to be a strength test, so I'll call it strength. And this is the simulation interface right above my head here. Go full screen. This is your simulation interface. You start with the material at the top. This is your material database. I don't need to do anything here because it was already applied at the component level. That's that interconnectivity between SOLIDWORKS CAD and SOLIDWORKS simulation. But I'll show you this library here. We have all these different types of materials, several hundreds of materials that you have access to for running these studies. We already have that applied. I know because I have the check mark here, it lists the material here. We can move on. Step two, I like to work at the top, start at the top and work my way down. So step one is the material. Step two is the connections. That's how it interacts with other components in the uh, assembly. Well, this is a single body part, so this is easy. I can just skip this step. But there's other things here. There's springs, pins, bolts, bearings. I could add things like welds in here um, if I were doing an assembly analysis. I don't need to do anything here. I can just move on to the next step, which is fixtures. Now fixtures, fixtures is how it's held in place. Okay, so how is it held and in interacting with everything that's not modeled, right? So fixed geometry is very easy. I could just add a fixture there. That's how it's held in place but there's advanced fixtures. The only one I'll show you is this reference geometry. This is how I would say, hey, this face can move an inch or half an inch, and then how much force did it take to do that? So that's a useful technique, what we call prescribed displacement. So here's the loading on that face, and I'll move on here now to the external loads. See how I'm working my way down from the top to the bottom, just right-clicking on the simulation menu, graphically looking to see what I have going on here. Here's my force. I know it's gonna be applied to that face, but not in that direction. So I will pick any edge or any plane, any piece of my geometry that gives me a way to reference the direction. So here I know it's not in Newtons. I don't know what a Newton is. No, just kidding. I'm not working in SI units here, we're working in the um, English units here, inch pound seconds. So 200 pounds going down, just reverse the direction, graphically looking to match that up. I don't need to know things like positive, negative. Is it up, down, left, right? I graphically look at the arrows indicating to me the direction. Hit the check mark here. Lastly, I need to add my mesh. Now the mesh, this is Pretty complicated in a lot of, of softwares, but in this, really simple. You have a slider, fine or coarse. That's all you need to do. Hit the check mark. And that, to me, 
is a pretty good mesh. Now, I can take this to the next level and really interrogate the mesh if I wanted to, or I'll show you, right? I can hit create mesh and I can expand all these parameters, choose a different algorithm. I have options here for max element size, min element size, the uh, H value or the number of elements in a circle, the growth ratio, I can change that up. Here's my advanced options here for the Jacobian to check the distortion of my elements, right? So I can do a whole lot here. I can change the quality. Is it high quality or is it low quality, what we call draft quality, right? This is describing the shape of the, parab of the um, tetrahedron in there. Is it a parabolic edge or a linear edge, right? So there's a lot of things that you can check for here, a lot of things that you can do in this. And I'll show you one extra step here in simulation standard and all simulation levels for that matter, you can do what's called mesh controls where I could say, all right, I want a much more fine mesh, smaller triangle size here and a little bit larger everywhere else. So I'll switch to curvature based mesher, say that's okay. And you should see smaller element sizes down in this area here. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm ready to run this now, so let's run this study. And remember, what I'm looking for is, is it strong enough, right? So here's my stress plot, here's my displacement plot. Just clicking on these and showing them, I can animate this, right? I can use certain tools, like the probe tool. I can say, okay, what's my displacement as I go from here to here to here to here? Right, click, 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 all those nodes. Click here to plot it. I can see how the displacement goes from left to right. Going up like that, right? So a lot of stuff you can do here. My stress, 98 megapascals. Well, looks like we switched back to SI units. Well, you can switch back and forth between units. It doesn't really matter. It's all numbers. Conversions happen behind the scenes. It's just how you want to display it. If I wanted to switch back, Double click on the plot, PSI, boom. So let's look at, is it strong enough, right? The plot to look at for is it strong enough is what we call the factor of safety plot. It basically tells us based on its inherent material strength, yes or no, is it strong enough? So we can quantify that by looking at a factor of safety plot. So I'm down here under the results, right click on results, factor of safety, hit next, next, Okay, and I look at this minimum number, 2.09. Obviously, the color of this graph, of this plot, is not too useful, so we can just ignore that. I'll throw that off the screen there. What I want to look at here is the minimum factor of safety listed here on the color plot and listed up in here, 2.1. If it's above 1, that means it's passing, okay? Anything below 1 means it's going to break. So what I'm seeing here with a factor of safety of 2.1, I'm learning that this is strong enough for one loading. What happens if we do this multiple times? So let's do a new study now. And I'm going to do a fatigue study. So I click fatigue. You can get really complicated with the fatigue if it's uh, vibrations or harmonic loading, variable amplitude, constant amplitude. We're just going to go constant amplitude, keep it simple here, show you a very quick example of how to use the fatigue study here inside a SOLIDWORKS simulation standard. So I'm setting this up. I right click to add event. And what I'm doing here is I am picking from, look at this, it looks like Excel, right? All these sheets listed here, different studies are listed here. Strength is the one, not study one, but the one called strength is what I want to use. So I'll pick from the list. I can even scale this up to add a scale factor, uh, 2.5, sure, or two. To make sure I'm going to be really safe, I want this to be 100,000 cycles. So 100, 1, 2, 3, 1,000 cycles. There's my event that got added. I can right-click, apply fatigue data. I can define the SN curve um, basically by just typing in the data directly. Or my favorite is deriving it from the elastic modulus. Basically, this functionality is great. I can instantly apply SN data by just deriving it through these ASME curves. And with that, I am ready to run this study 
very quickly and I get two plots, damage and life. Now, damage and life are basically just inverses of one another. The damage tells me after that 100,000 cycles, how much damage is there? One cycle removes a specific percentage of the damage. So at the end of that 100,000 cycles, how much percentage-wise? If it gets to 100, that means it broke or failed due to fatigue. How much? Well, 25%. And I'm looking here. This is the hot spot. So if I were to have a concern, that's where I would go to look. But here, the life plot. How many cycles is this going to last? And it looks like 400,000 cycles. Well, I wanted 100,000 cycles. Obviously, everything here is linear. One loading gives us certain things that then we can extrapolate the data out from it, extend it to the entire life of it. And I can find that 400,000 cycles is how many cycles it's going to take. So what did we learn from doing this? Well, we learned that we can use SolidWorks simulation standard to run a strength test to find out if our design is going to hold up to the requirements. And then from there, we can expand on that and run the part for the entire life of it and figure out, is it going to last the entire life that we want it to? No matter how many cycles are applied, will it last? Okay, so simulation standard is the tool that can help us as designers make these decisions and know for sure if we're ready to move on from our design. So that is SolidWorks simulation standard, just one of the many tools that's part of the simulation product suite found with SolidWorks. Thanks for watching.